The Georgia Senate runoff election between Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Trump-backed Herschel Walker is just five days away. And if you're in the Walker camp, that come, can't come fast enough because it seems each and every day brings some new piece of news demonstrating just what a terrible candidate Mr. Walker is. Tonight, former President Barack Obama was in Georgia at a rally for Warnock, and man, it was not pretty for Herschel Walker. Since the last time I was here... <laughs> Since the last time I was here, Mr. Walker has been talking about issues that are of great importance to the people of Georgia. Like whether it's better to be a vampire or a werewolf. This is a debate that I must confess I once had myself. When I was seven. Then I grew up. In case you're wondering, by the way, Mr. Walker decided he wanted to be a werewolf, which is great. As far as I'm concerned, he can be anything he wants to be, except for a United States Senator. Since the last time I since the last time I was here, apparently, he also claimed that he used to let me beat him at basketball. But then he admitted that we have never actually met. So I guess this was more of an imaginary whooping that I laid on him. Now, listen, this would be funny if he weren't running for Senate. That's well said. I've had that very same thought many times. It's the reality of the situation. It's not only Democrats who understand this. Listen to the story told by the Republican, current Republican Lieutenant Governor of Georgia yesterday. I showed up to vote this morning. I was one of those folks who got in line and spent about an hour waiting. And, uh, you know, it was the most disappointing ballot I've ever stared at in my entire life uh, since I started voting. You know, I had two candidates that I just couldn't couldn't find anything that, that made sense for me to put my, my vote behind. And so I walked out of that, that ballot box uh, showing up to vote but not voting for either one of them. It's not so surprising, a story, given that throughout this campaign, nearly every day there seems to have brought a new bombshell about Herschel Walker. CNN reported that Walker claimed his Texas home as his principal residence as recently as this year. The Daily Beast revealed that the place Walker's so-called home in Georgia was rented out as recently as last year. And then today, another explosive report by the Daily Beast, a former longtime girlfriend coming forward with a harrowing and detailed account of their five-year relationship, including a, quote, violent episode with the football star, who she believes is unstable, has little to no control over his mental state when he is not in treatment. Herschel Walker just blanket denies every one of those stories, but notably, never really substantively disputes facts. Roger Sullenberger is a political reporter for the Daily Beast who broke that story along with numerous other stories about Herschel Walker during his campaign. Hillary Holly is a Georgia political organizer, currently executive director of Care in Action, which is mobilizing voters in the runoff, and both join me now. Hillary, let me start with you about that mobilization. We've seen huge early voting numbers, record-setting early numbers. Um, but, you know, I think there's this general assumption, well, big turnout, good for Democrats. But this was interesting from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Um, the first full, full day of early voting in all of Georgia's 159 counties, turnout was particularly robust in lightly populated rural counties that Walker carried in the midterm. Um, among the counties that backed U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock, 478,000 people had voted through Tuesday in counties that supported Walker. 355,000 ballots have been cast. It's always hard to draw conclusions. But what is your sense about the level of engagement, particularly because this race won't decide Senate control as some thought it might? Yes. Well, first, thank you so much for having me this evening. I will say this. Over the weekend, so this past weekend, which we had to fight so hard to right. get, right? The Republicans try to ban Saturday voting, and because of the Mark Elias lawsuit, we were able to get Saturday voting. Over that time, we had over 70,000 people vote. And what we have seen over the past week is we've seen hundreds of thousands. So we're averaging over 250,000 voters every single day. 
And the reason because of that is we have canvassers, so such as Care in Action, Black Voters Matter, the labor organization Unite Here. We collectively are knocking over 200,000 doors a day. We have, but we have knocked over 3 million doors so far. And so when I'm looking at the turnout, Chris, I'm looking at our voters who are showing up. And as you just saw, we have some Republican voters who are voting for Warnock. That's right. And yes. so we're feeling great on the ground. Yeah, that's, that, that, that last point is, is important, I think, because one of the things we saw when the electorate as a whole in that midterm election um, was slightly more Republican identified than the 2020 uh, electorate that showed up that, that in which Biden carried the state. So the, the, there were Republicans voting for Warnock. We know that. Uh, it wouldn't, the math wouldn't have scanned otherwise. Roger, I was struck by your story today because it seems like in the last few days, I remember when Donald Trump kind of, you know, picked Herschel Walker as you know, he clearly wanted him to run for Senate. And there was a, a whole bunch of concerns from Georgia Republican politicos who were like, this is a bad idea, here's why. He doesn't live in Georgia. Here's the picture of his house in Texas. Also, he's got this really, really rocky past and you know, he pointed a gun at an ex and all that. And it's like, somehow, I, every day it's like a new story that's exactly the things that Georgia Republicans said were the reason that he wouldn't be a good candidate. Yeah, and uh, I think that a lot of those things revolve around women, tellingly. And yeah. uh, the stories that I've broken do tend to revolve around the women and uh, his family, you know, the secret children, the constant lying, the uh, abortion that he paid for. Uh, and then now this latest story with a woman coming forward using her name very bravely to detail a uh, violent episode with him, but more than that, you know, five years of an intimate relationship with him, trying to help him manage his dissociative identity disorder, which also everybody knew that he had coming into it. And I think the most remarkable thing out of all of this to me is, you know, after Roe v. Wade was overturned and a bunch of Republicans started trying to shade sort of towards the, the center, trying to come off as a little bit more moderate, uh, Herschel Walker put his foot on the gas and was, you know, just outspoken about being anti-abortion candidate, right? And then the whole time he's known that this was there uh, in his yeah. past and he's continued with it. One more follow-up to you, Roger. It's striking the account of the woman that you interviewed today. You know, that he, he's very public, obviously, about his struggles with mental health and basically his story is, I went through some really tough times. I found God, I turned my life around. I'm, I'm, I'm a different person now and I'm ready to serve as your senator. And here, she's coming forward basically to say, I don't think, I mean, I don't think that's true. That's kind of the top line of what she says to you. Yeah, I think she's saying how serious the problem is with him. And he acknowledges that it's serious as well, but he also points to, you know, the book and to Christianity as, you know, sort of an, an excuse, I guess, uh, or a reason that, you know, I've overcome these things, you know, and I deserve forgiveness. And, you know, everybody does deserve forgiveness. That's true. But I think it's a little bit more complicated. You know, the year after the book was published, he had a child out of wedlock and then a few months later uh, paid a woman to have an abortion right. while he was dating a woman who is now now his wife and several other women that I've spoken with. Um, it's it was not an, an inflection point. It doesn't seem uh, if you're judging you know behavior that way. And I think that that has gone lost. A lot of people are very willing to forgive him and to offer him redemption. But, um, you know, by his own telling and his own actions, I'm not, you know, exactly sure where that, you know, uh, born again point actually begins. In the final 30 seconds here, Hillary, it seemed like Raphael Warnock was shying away from some of these more sort of like this guy is unfit to be your senator uh, critiques before, less so now. That does seem like a huge part of the closing argument here. Listen, Georgia voters want to know how Democrats can improve their lives. And they have watched Warnock show up for them in ways that we just couldn't imagine before 2020. And so voters are eager to get to the polls again. They know who Raphael Warnock is. They know that they do not want Warnock to represent, or sorry, um, Walker to represent yep. them. And so we're gonna show up and we're gonna turn out. We're helping them mitigate or find um, ways to get around the voter suppression and helping them figure out when and where to vote. 
And if we do that, Chris, we're going to win. We're feeling we, great. We will be keeping our eyes on it. Roger Sollenberger, Hillary Holly, thank you both. <laughs>